students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from Central Europe here in Budapest. I hope everybody has had a fantastic week and is looking forward to a great weekend. Hi, honey. Welcome to our members. Hi, Arda. Hi, Surya. Hi, Shakhsaib. Just Shakha. Good to see many students here and ready to learn. In this class, everyone, we are looking at the IELTS listening section and we're continuing with part three and part four of the listening exam that we started yesterday. So if you were here in yesterday's class, fantastic. If you missed yesterday's class, no worries. Uh, you've got lots to learn, lots to practice in today's class as well. Hi, Sammy. Again, everyone, this lesson is presented to you and the materials brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com where we have six original practice exams, lots of strategies uh, for the listening section, and we're adding four more exams this uh, year. Also, uh, you can use the code R4TYJ on our websites to save yourself 20% off of our premium package. And we have videos, interactive courses, lots and lots more. We'll be using these websites today for the listening material. This is the academic version here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join our premium package. And for the general IELTS, it's the green background and you can click that big red button to join our premium package there. So make sure to check that out. Of course, we are a British Council IELTS Registration Center for Saudi Arabia. So you can contact us if you're in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We can help you register. And uh, we are also certified British Council agents. So uh, definitely ask us any questions that you might have. If you have questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. You can get our listening materials through our uh, mobile apps also, uh, Academic IELTS Help app links to aehelp.com, General IELTS Help app links to gieltshelp.com. You can grab those apps. There's some free materials there for you. Of course, there's a paid version as well, up to you. Definitely, they will help you to improve your communication and English. Okay, everyone, so listening part three coming up here real quick. Uh, tomorrow Q and a answer and question or question and answer class for members. And then we'll have a speaking part three, uh, for everyone right now. Uh, let's get to our exam. This is coming from our very first exam and this is going to be section three, uh, students who were in yesterday's class. Do you remember what this, uh, part three is about? Does anybody remember? what uh, part three listening is about in this uh, case. Remember that strategy I showed you yesterday during the introduction uh, and uh, instructions of the listening? That's about one minute. You have a chance to just quickly look at uh, the topics of each of the four parts. Okay, Carolina says it's some kind of a project. Honey says it's a class uh, discussion. Yeah, absolutely. So part three here is some kind of a discussion about a group project. Very good, Moria. Fantastic. Okay, so that's what we will be listening for in this class at this time. Now, um, I am uh, using my microphone and a nice Bose speaker uh, to play the audio for you through the live class. Uh, if it's quiet for you, turn up the volume, use a headset if possible. And um, don't write your answers uh, in the chat. Wait until the end, okay? That gives everybody a fair chance. So wait until the end of the speaking part three uh, to share your answers. We will go through the answers uh, together at that time. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to hop over to our website here, get into my uh, student account. And then once I'm in my student account, I can uh, end the tour and go to my IELTS audio CDs. And here it will be CD1 and uh, it will be 
track number three because of course it's part number three so here we go students get ready for this um and uh listen and answer and we'll go through the answers at the end together don't put your answers in the chat wait till the end this recording is copyrighted by two think one solutions inc and world esl tutors you will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear there will be time given to read the instructions and questions. Now turn to section three. Take some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Listening section three. You will hear three students organizing a class project. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. I just got an email from the professor saying the due date for our European History Group project has been pushed back to Monday. Great, that means we'll have the weekend to work on it. I suppose that's good news, but I don't really want to do any homework on my weekend. I have planned to go away with my girlfriend for some relaxation this weekend. I suppose that's understandable. Maybe we should just have it done by Friday, the original due date. That gives us today and Thursday to finish it. We can do that, I think. I'm available tomorrow. How about we spend today planning it, a sign task to take home with us and do tonight, and then meet tomorrow and put it all together. Does that sound right? That works for me. That doesn't work too well for me. My afternoon is very busy. I guess I'll just have to burn the midnight oil tonight. What has you so tied up, Evan? I have a basketball game after school today. And then my favourite football team plays this evening at seven. It's okay though, I'll get the work done. Let's get started on the planning. All right, so we have to come up with a three panel poster about a topic in European history. I already bought the material for the poster, so we don't have to worry about that. How much was it? It was three pounds. Okay, we'll each give you one pound for the poster board. No, don't worry about it. My dad paid for it anyway. Sounds good to me. Right then, since there's three of us, my idea was that two of us could take care of the writing part of the project, while one of us could look after the artwork, making the poster look smart. I'll do the artwork. I think I'm a pretty good artist. I'll be happy to do half the writing. What topics are we going to choose? Well, the professor said the topic has to be an event that took place somewhere between 1400 and 1800, so we can't do either of the world wars. That's too bad. My dad is an expert on the Second World War and he could have helped me with my part. What are we going to do instead? You now have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 27 to 30. I was reading my textbook the other day and I read some really interesting information on the French Revolution. That's a really good idea. I know. How about instead of doing a summary of the French Revolution, we write about some of the people involved instead? Oh, I like that idea. So who are some of the important people? Well, there's the King, Louis the Sixteenth. Robespierre was important, I think. Yes, he was. And of course, Napoleon Bonaparte. We should have four people, so you can each write about two people. How about Marie Antoinette? OK, so we have four historical figures. Each of you are going to write about two. Now we have to decide how much we're going to write. Remember, we have to fill up a three-board poster. That's a good point about the three-board poster. Maybe we should do a fifth person, then we can have two figures on each side with one in the middle. Good idea. We can make the middle one really important. We'll make that one Napoleon. As for a fifth person, how about Voltaire? Good. 
So how about I do the important one on Napoleon and a smaller one on Robespierre? OK, and I'll do the other three. How long should each topic be? I'd say 200 words each for the small ones and 450 for the big one on Napoleon. I think that sounds about right. What do you think about meeting up later on? That is the end of section three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And quickly use that half minute to go back to your first answer and then go through sequentially, question by question, just real quick, making sure that you don't have any silly little mistakes. All right, let me just stop our audio there and then we'll go back and go through these answers together, talk a little bit of strategy while we do that. Uh, here we go. Okay, uh, so um, what day of the week uh, does this discussion take place? Uh, so this is coming from the beginning. You have to kind of figure this out from the information that they're saying. It's an inferred uh, piece of information. Karen, uh, good job on your exam. I'm happy you got that. That's fantastic. Send me an email, Karen. I'd love to get your testimonial. Okay, uh, Hina says Friday. Uh, Honey says Friday. Nope. Sandeep says Friday. Nope, that's not right. The discussion, what day does it take place? Uh, the project is due on Friday. So it's definitely not on Friday that they're talking. It's not Friday. It's not Monday. It's not Thursday. It is not Thursday. That's right, Bijay, except you need the right spelling. It's Wednesday, okay? It's Wednesday. And all you need to put in here is uh, wed, like that, or you can spell out the full word. Both are okay, all right? All capitals are okay. The W has to be capital because uh, days of the week is considered a proper noun. So you have to have the capital W and uh, ak Akib, be careful, you need an A in day, okay? All right, um, how do we know that? Because they say, well, we should hand in the project on the original due date, which is Friday, uh, which means that will give us today and Thursday to work on it. Okay, so today and Thursday to work on it, to hand it on Friday uh, means that it must be Wednesday. Now, if you don't catch an answer, uh, what you should do is you should check the transcripts, okay? So in our books, you will find the transcripts in the back of the book. Let me just uh, find that for us real quick here. Okay. So in the back of any good IELTS exam book, you find the transcripts where the uh, actual dialogue is, and this is for this exam. So let's just go to, okay, here we go. So this is uh, part three for us. Um, hopefully everybody can see that. So Megan says, I just got an email from the professor saying the due date for our European history group project has been pushed back to Monday, okay? From this, we can figure out that the topic of this part three is a European history group project, okay? Uh, it's good practice, students, to use the transcripts in the back of your IELTS books to practice these listening conversations. It's a good way to improve your English. Everybody clear on that? Everybody catching that? So the transcripts, which means the script for the dialogue in the back of the book, is really good to use, okay? All right? Uh, of course, you can find the books in our premium courses on ahelp.com, glshelp.com. Okay, so here you have the answer highlighted. Megan says, I suppose that's understandable. Maybe we should just have it done by Friday, the original due date. That gives us today and Thursday to finish it, which means they have two days to finish it, which means that today is Wednesday, okay? So always check the answer in the back of the book and find out why you got an answer wrong, okay? Is that clear, everyone? So 
this is kind of my uh, first tip for you is uh, a lot of students just do a lot of listening and never check. Okay, so many students uh, listen to lots of IELTS exams without really checking into why they are making mistakes. This is inefficient uh, study strategy. You must identify the reason and language uh, for the answer. You will find this in the transcripts at the back of IELTS exam books. You shouldn't be studying from exam books that don't have transcripts. They're much, 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 much less efficient for learning and for improving in the listening section and for vocabulary and reading and so forth, okay? All right, so hopefully that's uh, clear. Uh, Kahina Aziz, aehelp.com, that's where you will find this book, okay? For the academic IELTS, and you'll find it for general IELTS for gieltshelp.com. Okay. All right. Um, so let's get back to the questions here. All right. Uh, just uh, jump back to that page in the book. Here we go. Okay. So Wednesday. All right. Now here we had a table. And in the table, it says the group's task and then when the task is completed. So today, uh, what are they doing? And you should get this. I mean, this is what they're actually doing in the discussion. Okay. So Surya says number 22 should be plan. Surya, you're right. Plan is okay. Plan the project. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, planning is okay too. So I think both plan or planning uh, both word forms are acceptable in this case. Plan the project today or planning the project today. That's what they are doing. Planning is a bit more accurate, but plan is okay as well. All right. So planning the project. Uh, you don't actually need capital P's here because uh, these are common nouns. So even if you wrote a small p, it's fine. Okay. I know that they're putting capitals here, but eh, even a small letter would be correct. It's not a full sentence, so you don't really need to capitalize it as the first word. Okay, plan the project or planning the project, sure. Uh, doing the project tonight and then putting the project uh, together, so putting together the project for number 23, it only makes sense that they would do that. Hardik, that's fantastic. Thank you for coming back and sharing your score. I'm happy to have been... Uh, a helping hand in your journey and good luck in your next step. Send me an email, Hardik. I'd love to get your testimonial. Tomorrow, that's right, Surya, Sammy. Yeah, very good. Mirza, nicely done. Tay, Nguyen, Catherine, yeah, tomorrow. Now, just be really careful with the spelling, right? Tomorrow, with that wonderful rolling double R, tomorrow, like a roaring engine, okay? Uh, Bajay, yeah, don't spam. You can write all in capital as well. It's just slower and you can make uh, spelling mistakes uh, easier, okay? So don't spam students in the chat. Just write your questions once. If I miss it, send me an email, okay? Um, it's not nice to spam it for either me or other students, all right? Um, okay, so uh, yeah, tomorrow, very good. If I miss a question, students, you can always just send an email. Me or one of my colleagues will definitely get back to you. Okay, next question here is who paid the cost uh, of the poster board? So here you're listening for a statement, not a question. So uh, with um, multiple choice, you always want to listen for the statement. So this person paid uh, for the poster board. Okay. And um, the answers aren't always exactly worded as you see them here. Sometimes they're paraphrased. So make sure to listen for paraphrasing. Okay. 
So listen for paraphrasing. So who paid for the poster board? Uh, a lot of people, uh, Sarju, Hina, uh, Busra, Natalie says dad. Yeah, um, very good. That was the paraphrasing, Natalie. You're right. Uh, the woman says, ah, don't worry about it. My dad paid for it anyway. Uh, so the correct answer here is B, one of the woman's father paid for it. And she actually says, my dad paid for it. Now you have to be careful because at first she says, oh, I got the poster board already. So it sounds like one of the women is the correct answer. And then when the um, other project members say, oh, well, uh, we'll give you like one pound each. Then she says, oh, don't worry about it. My dad paid for it anyway. Okay. So be really, really careful um, with um, the timing. Okay. Sometimes it sounds like you just got the answer, uh, but uh, you didn't. So you have to wait a little bit to get the right answer. Okay. So be patient. Be patient. Here you had to wait a little bit to get the correct answer. Okay. Patience is very important in um, part three and part four of the listening. So important that for those students who want to get a band eight or a band nine, uh, it's, um, it's crucial that you're patient. Okay, so I'm going to write this tip down for you, uh, especially for listening uh, part three and four. You must exercise uh, patience as some of the answers take a bit of time to be revealed in the audio. Okay. All right. Can I get a couple thumbs up on that? So, um, is that clear for everybody? So be really careful. In part three and four, if you're just listening for keywords, uh, it's a very good chance that you're going to make some mistakes because the answers sometimes seem like, oh, that was the answer, but then wait, no, that wasn't the answer. That's actually the answer. Okay, Sammy's got the double thumbs up. Very good. Gracie says, Whoosh. Hassan says, Whoosh. very good. Okay, so patience, patience, practice that. That's where practice is really important before the exam. Okay, all right, so be patient. Okay, so number 25, these were some uh, fill in the blanks. Okay, no more than uh, three words and or a number for each answer. So the topic must be an event that occurred sometime between the years that and that. So what were the answers here? Yeah, 14 and 1800, and you don't need and, you just need the comma because they have and here. So you just need 14, 18. So only the missing information, okay? So in your answer sheet, uh, just write 14 and 1800, maybe with a comma or with a dash, okay? It's good. Yarabisha, very nice. Okay, Carolina, very good. Nancy, perfect. Nancy, don't write the word and, just a comma, okay? Uh, Guri, watch out with the extra zero on the 1800, okay? No extra zeros. If you accidentally put another zero there, well, you're going a few years into the future uh, and you'll also get it wrong, okay? All right, um, so number 26. What topic would the male student like to write on but cannot due to assignment restrictions because it happened after the 1800s? So uh, let's see what you have. Catherine Panks says Second World War. Very nice, nice spelling, Catherine. Good, that will work. It's a little bit slow to do it that way, but it will work. Uh, honey says world war, honey, that will not be correct because it's the second world war. Uh, Jagannathan says world war two, but small W's. So you'll get it marked wrong. Mr. Unsolved says second world war with small S W W will get it wrong. Okay. Sukradeep Basu says second world war with small W's will get it wrong. Vibe hub says world war two with Roman numeral two and big W's. Yeah, that'll be correct. Okay. So, uh, just Shakan says second WW. Yeah, that'll be correct. 
Carolina says, Roman numeral two, World War. That will be correct. Uh, students, the most common way to abbreviate World War II is big W, big W, Roman numeral two. That's World War II, okay? World War One, W, W, Roman numeral one, okay? Remember that. That's the easiest, fastest way to abbreviate World War II, World War I, okay? The correct answer here is World War II has to be capitals. It's the name of a very unique war. It has to be capital letters, small letters. Definitely you'll get it marked wrong, okay? Lots of different ways. Second World War is okay too, but you gotta be really careful, okay? So WW2, Roman numeral two. If you do it like this, that's also okay, all right? But like I say, we usually use, uh, es especially for historical information, oftentimes uh, we use the Roman numerals, okay? All right. Okay, uh, so finally, uh, they talked about, after a little bit of a break, um, this poster board, this project, okay? And then they're talking about um, the French Revolution, the birth of modern um, democracy, right? Very important event in human history, the French Revolution, rise of Napoleon, rise of democracy, uh, and they're doing a three-board poster. So you got your one side, you've got your middle, and then you've got your other side. You've probably seen these projects, uh, conventions, they have them. It's a big poster, and then somebody's standing beside this big poster, and they're talking about the information. And here they discuss that they're going to have somebody in the middle. It's very important with some information. And then they're going to have one person here, and they'll have another person here. I'll have someone here, and someone here. And these will be the important people of the French Revolution. And you had to figure out, uh, based on the listening, who is going to be on this uh, poster and where. Okay, uh, so 27, um, on the sides of the poster, in the middle, or they do not include it? What's going on there? Okay, so first one, Robespierre. Yeah, on the sides of the poster, very good, Max Production, absolutely. So they mention uh, Robespierre, they said, oh, Robespierre's pretty important, okay? Uh, and Robespierre's going to be on the side, Okay. So on the side, eight is. Uh, Rousseau, 28. On the poster, on the side, in the middle, or not on the poster for this one. This is 28, Rousseau. Very good, honey. Yeah, Rousseau's not on there. Uh, we don't hear Rousseau, okay? They don't even mention uh, the name of this person. So definitely see, we don't hear this name, Rousseau, in the audio, it's quite different than robe spear, okay? Uh, so, not mentioned. 29, Louis the 16th. Okay, notice for kings and queens, we also use Roman numerals. Uh, so, 29, uh, King Louis the 16th. On the side, there's only one person in the middle, so if you heard who's in the middle, you shouldn't be picking more than one. Yeah, it's A, okay? All right. Um, okay, and Napoleon Bonaparte. Ooh, the big Napoleon, the big N. He was actually a, quite a small man, according to historical records. Uh, Napoleon is for 30. Yeah, very good. Good, good, good. He's in the middle. Napoleon was a key figure in the French Revolution. So he is in the middle. That's Napoleon. Okay, and uh, we have Louis. So we have Robespierre, okay, we have Louis, we have Napoleon. Uh, bonus question, who are the other two people? Let's see how many of you did some really good active listening here, okay? So um, who were the other two people in the French Revolution that were fairly important and that were also on this uh, poster project? Okay, let's see who picks up my bonus points for the day. Now, this is just for pride. There's no actual prize here, but just for pride, who picks up these bonus points? 
This is called active listening. Natalie, very good. Voltaire was one. Nicely done. Natalie, you get my first super thumbs up. Okay, Voltaire. Yeah, Voltaire was one of them. Okay, an incredible author, if you ever read Voltaire. Yeah, very good, Catherine. It was Marie Antoinette. Very famous woman in history. She was a friend of the people, and uh, she was very controversial because she was nobility, and um, she got executed, um, but it was very controversial because people actually loved Marie Antoinette and didn't really want to execute her, but in order to show that the world is changing from um, a monarchy, or at least Europe, to uh, a democracy, a free democracy, um, she was executed. So very controversial and interesting person in history, Ma Marie Antoinette. So Voltaire, uh, Marie Antoinette, that's called active listening. Good job. Okay, Catherine Pang, you just got that second thumb up. Okay, very good. Marie Antoinette. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't uh, learned much about uh, French Revolution, I highly recommend it as it is a crucial part of the way the world works today. And not just Europe, but most of the world now works today. All right. The French said enough of people ruling based on birthright. People should rule based on their talent and ability. Okay. So that was part three. How did you do? What did you get? Okay, on part three, what was your overall score? Okay, out of 10 here. Uh, for part three and four, you're really aiming for, let's say, lowest score should be six, seven, or more. Okay, if you're getting less than six correct, you're going to be in trouble to get that band 6.5 and sev or 7, okay? Ty says, I got 9 on that. Shahzaib says, I got 8. Honey got 8. Yarabisha got 7. Catherine, you got 10. Very good. Those are some nice marks, okay? So your goal is over 6 in uh, part 3 and part 4. If you've gotten over 6, you're on the right track, okay? Max production, 6, you're on the right track, okay? All right. Okay, students, so that's part three. Now let's move on to part four, okay? So again, um, one really good strategy and practice for part three and part four is go beyond the listening questions and ask questions in groups from each other, okay? I'm just gonna make a note of that for you. So a, a very good study strategy for listening is to go beyond the questions in the exam and ask for further details from each other in groups, okay? Uh, like what I showed you. Uh, for example, who else is included in this project? for the sides of the poster board. Okay, everybody got that? Yeah, can I get a couple of, yeah, AJ's going, what? okay, I got it. So don't just listen and answer, but actually listen and try to retell the story, try to ask questions from each other. That will get your brain thinking more actively. You'll be a lot more in tune with not just some of the information, but all of the information, okay? So you will engage the information. All right. Fantastic. Yes. Bajay is even giving us a little bit of bicep flex. Good for you. All right. Yarabis has got it. Fantastic. Okay, everyone, let's get ready for uh, part four. Okay. Part four, there's no break. It's just one lecture, usually, uh, usually from a college or university class. Again, uh, students, save your answers for after at the end. Okay. Uh, don't show them in the chat so that everybody has a chance to answer on their own. You probably remember that this is climate change at this point that we're uh, talking about, okay? Um, and uh, I'm just going to hop back to our website here. Again, if it's quiet for you, use a headset, turn up the volume. Uh, here we go, everyone. So listening section four.
Now turn to section four. Take some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Listening section four. You will hear a professor discussing climate change. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Hello class, hope you all had a good weekend. Today we will be talking about climate change. Life on Earth is going to have some adapting to do if climate scientists are correct with regard to their predictions of the Earth's rising atmospheric temperature. Humans and animals alike may have to change both their habits and habitats. The average temperature on the Earth's surface has risen by an estimated one degree centigrade in the last hundred years, and this trend is continuing at an ever increasing speed. Until now, it seems that business and the environment have met as adversaries. But with the growing profitability of green products, perhaps business can play a positive role in the fight to save the environment. There is an ever growing consensus that the cause of climate change can be linked to human action. To be more specific, environmental change is caused by the emission of greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide is chief among these. So what's so bad about things getting a little warmer, you may wonder? Weather patterns could become more extreme. The polar ice caps could melt. Sea levels could rise. And instances of famine due to drought could also increase. On the other hand, places such as northern Canada will likely become more productive for farming and mineral and crude oil extraction. What isn't positive about the permafrost melting is that the ice is a carbon sink and when it melts, it releases even more carbon into the atmosphere. It's clear that humans will have to change their relationship with the earth and its resources, but the debate remains over who should be leading that change. Advocates of personal responsibility claim that small personal measures, such as changing light bulbs or riding a bike, can make a significant difference. On the other hand, governments from developing countries are calling for economic reparations to be paid by developed nations because, after all, it is the rich who cause most of the environmental damage and made money from it. The other major group that has profited from our increasing environmental degradation are corporations. Business has always been about production and consumption. The invisible hand of supply and demand has long run our economic system, and now there is an ever-growing demand for conservation. The question is, when will consumer demand be commensurate with green technological advances that allow for environmentally friendly products to actually be more profitable than those that pollute? One option to speed up this process is to have governments impose true cost taxes on every product that is sold. This would force prices to include an economic pressure to purchase or use products that will not cause further environmental degradation or carbon emissions. There is little doubt that climate change is going to cause a drastic difference to our environment and way of life. The questions that remain to be asked revolve around how to solve the climate crisis and who will pay for the restructuring of our patterns of consumption that have led to these problems. With the ever-growing desire for green consumer goods, perhaps businesses can answer some of these questions by producing environmentally sound products. Even if business has a role to play in saving the environment, it is clear that we all need to do our part. That is the end of section four. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, and then here you have half a minute, and then you actually have another 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet and the paper-based test. And I think you have about another five minutes in the computer-based test to look over your answers. So let's go through these together. Obviously a lot of paraphrasing here. So what you see on the paper isn't exactly what you hear in the audio, but as long as you understand what's on the paper, 
and what's in the audio, you can answer most of these. Let me make it a little bit smaller, just a tiny touch so it fits on the screen a bit better. Okay, uh, so here we go. Uh, you shouldn't paraphrase the answer, not which. Uh, you should keep the answer the same, okay? So here we go. Humanity, as well as other species, may have to uh, drastically alter their what and what. This is for one question, so make sure you put both of these words into the same line. Okay, Moria says it's habits, habitats. Yeah, you don't need the word and because it's in your sh uh, question sheet. So just habits, plural, S is important, and habitats. Habits and habitats. Okay, very good. And you can write all capital as well. Well done, Rashika. So, yeah, our behavior and where we live. But you should keep what you hear in the radio, okay? Earth's surface temperature has risen an estimated one degree centigrade in the past century. Businesses and environmentalists have been at odds with one another, but the emergence of something may change this. What is it? What may change the conflict between businesses and environmentalists? Very good, Stuti. Yeah, green products. Yeah, very nicely done. So green products. Right? Products that are environmentally friendly. Green products. Yeah, honey, nicely done. Green products. Honey, S on the end. Okay, emergence of green products. If you don't see an article like a... Uh, or an here, it's often a good uh, hint that this is going to be a plural. Not always, but often. Okay, if you don't see the singular article, then think plural. Plurals are very important in IELTS, okay, in singulars. All right, so causes and implication. Climate change is cause, climate change is caused by greenhouse gases. Uh, specifically what? So he says greenhouse gases specifically, honey says carbon dioxide. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, Malik Patel, nice. You can you absolutely just go CO2, all right? You can use the um, abbreviation for this molecule, CO2, okay? So carbon dioxide. If you know the abbreviation, use that, okay? Or the notation. Warmer weather can cause extreme weather patterns. Ice caps could melt and famine could occur. Northern Canada may become a beneficiary. As far as food production is concerned, it could become a more productive place for, what do you think, number 34? What could happen in North Canada? Farming. In fact, I was visiting uh, my friends a couple years ago in North Canada, uh, in, in uh, Northwest Territories, and they were uh, bragging that they were growing tomatoes. You could never grow tomatoes in the north-north part of Canada in the past. And nowadays, people can grow tomatoes in northern Canada. That's a fact. Uh, coming from me, I saw it with my own eyes. I was eating tomatoes grown naturally outdoors in northern Canada. Um, a big negative is that the melting permafrost contains a lot of carbon, which will be released if the ice caps melt. Who is going to change? People who think each person is responsible for themselves believe that small steps such as using energy efficient something or riding a bike can help. Not light boats, just shaka, but light bulbs. Yeah, light bulbs. Okay, light bulbs. There you go. Energy efficient bulbs, Rashika, is okay. You could just use bulbs, all right? That makes sense. Energy efficient bulbs, sure. Okay, so light bulbs. Light bulb, everyone, is uh, this uh, device, okay, that you screw into your light fixture to give off light so that you can read, turn it on at nighttime, light bulbs, okay? All right, uh, let's keep going. Governments from developing nations want developed countries to pay them for causing such environmental damage. The something of supply and demand has been in charge of economics 
for a long time. This was a little bit tricky. Uh, two words, invisible hand. Okay, you really had to catch this one. This was one of those typical band nine. Okay, so the invisible hand, study lend, thank you. <laughs> All right, invisible hand of supply and demand. Okay, very good. And somebody's put up some invisible hands there, Bajay. Very nice, invisible hands emoji. Okay, economists wonder when consumer demand for environmental products will surpass products that pollute. One solution to this problem is to institute a something tax on each purchase, which is deemed to be environmentally unfriendly. I'm highly in favor of this. Um, what was it? So what kind of a tax? Very nice, Catherine. Yeah, Vijay, again with the emojis. Great. Moria, very nice. True cost. Yeah, it's a true cost uh, tax. Absolutely. Okay. So the real price of products. Okay. True cost tax. Very good. True cost. This would provide an economic something. Now, you might be able to guess this word, even if you missed it, to buy environmentally friendly products. Vibhav Thakur says that should be pressure. This would provide economic pressure. Yeah, of course, if you had to pay a whole bunch more to buy disposable batteries or disposable straws, right? That's one of the big changes uh, that happened in the world today in this topic, right? As you can't buy plastic straws anymore. I think that's a global thing. Is that everywhere in the world? By the way, I'm curious because I know in Canada and most of Europe, um, you cannot buy plastic straws. Everybody knows what a straw is. You have the drinking uh, glass with some water and the straw is this uh, neat little pipe that you can suck the water through. Um, so plastic straws are now banned. Is that for everyone else too? Siddhanth, yeah, in India, yes. Yeah, so plastic straws are finished. Um, if you have a package of original plastic straws, you remember those really nice plastic straws that look like this and they kind of have that red or pink spiral like that? If you have an unopened package of those, I recommend saving them because in 50 years, I bet you they will be worth a lot of money as an unopened package of those colorful straws from the early 2000s, okay? And those will be a collector's item, I guarantee it, <laughs> all right? Um, okay, so uh, conclude. people will probably pay like $500 for a bag. Okay, conclusion, climate change is going to change our way of life. Who will pay for the necessary changes in our consumption patterns? With the growing demand for environmentally friendly goods, it's arguably something which can best answer this question. Who do you think should answer this question? Okay. Businesses. That's right. Vibe Hub. Yep. Businesses. Yeah. Businesses, which can best answer this question. And it's plural here. Business. Uh, they'll probably take business. Businesses should be the best here. Okay. Good. Um, but Jay, yeah, I see it. It's just hidden by Google, but I see it. Okay, um, it is apparent, however, that something have a uh, responsibility to look after the environment. I think this is clear. This should be understandable. It's the last question. Let's see how you did. One more question. Who gets it right? It's two words. Very nice, P.S. Very nice, Yerabisha. We all, yeah, we all have a responsibility, and that is very, very true. Uh, baby steps, baby steps, okay? The Great Wall of China was built stone by stone. If we want to save our planet, we want to save the environment, we have to save it piece by piece, garbage by garbage, tree by tree, and we all need to do our part. We can't expect others to do it for us. All right, students, good job. Now, last question here for you is, what did you get out of 40 for those of you who were in yesterday's class as well. What was your overall score out of 40? And I'll show you where you can check your band score on our website here. I'll just have to darken it up a bit because the website's a lot brighter. So here's the website. Let me shrink it back down. 
And at the bottom of our website, um, you have this uh, score calculator right there at the very bottom. Score calculator. You click on that, or you can just also do a help score calculator. And then you will find the listening uh, score out of 40 there. And uh, let's just plug in some numbers and then we'll get those listening scores. So uh, let's see. Uh, Surya got 35. That's a band eight. Okay, hopefully you can see that. I'm not. And a Sandeep Yadav got 24. Uh, 24 is a band six. Okay. Uh, Moria. Uh, got 38. That's going to be a band 8.5, I believe, Moria. Yeah, because a band 9 is 39 and 40. Okay. Uh, Catherine, 36. Good job. 36. Okay, so that's a band 8. Very nice. Uh, max production, 14 out of, or sorry, 19 out of 40. 19. It's 5.5. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, you can check that. That's free. Uh, on the website. There's a lot of free tools on the website as well. So if you're working on a really low budget and you're not able to afford our premium package, don't worry about it. We have lots of free tools uh, for you as well, uh, like this uh, score calculator. Um, okay, everyone. So let me just brighten up our day. Good job to all of you for being in this class and fantastic for all of those who were in today's and yesterday's class. Uh, tomorrow, I will host a Q&A class for members and a speaking part three class for everyone, okay? Uh, Eugene, uh, there are all those wonderful emojis. Thank you for sharing that. Honey, great participation. I love seeing, honey, how you're more and more involved in the classes. That's fantastic. Okay, Yarabisha, same thing. I see more and more of your comments. So that's fantastic. Good job, everyone. Uh, tomorrow, I will be back. Let me just get you back on screen for one more minute here. There's a goodbye from my little baby daughter, Sabella. And um, again, make sure to visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS, where we've got lots more for you. Uh, I am Adrian signing out from Central Europe for now. Uh, take care, stay safe, be productive, be optimistic, and uh, good luck for those of you taking your exams this weekend. Bye for now, everyone.